Hi guys, so today I'm going to give you 20-ish things that you can do this summer without needing any friends if you're someone who's artistic or someone who wants to explore the world of art. The summer holidays are usually the perfect occasion if you're not working to do things that you don't usually get to do. Usually people think of partying, going on holiday with friends, you know, loads of fun things that you can do with people you care about and who are there for you. However, what about if you don't have friends? How can you go bowling, mini golfing, or even play board games or card games on your own? I know the solitaire exists, but there are more interesting card games out there. I've never found myself in this position personally, so I'm purely guessing, but presumably this probably makes you feel as though you're missing out on a lot of things, and chances are you probably are. It probably also makes you feel as though the only thing that's left for you to do during your summer holidays is to mop around in your room doing absolutely nothing at all because everything you want to do, you'd need another person to do it with and as we established before, we, you, you don't have that. So, out of the goodness of my heart, I decided to compile a simple, maybe not as thrilling as you might expect, but still a list of things that you can do this summer without any friends, if you have no car, no way of doing really exciting things like you'd wish to do. So that at the end of them, when it's back to school or whatever, you won't feel down about accomplishing absolutely nothing worthwhile at all. The worthwhile aspect of this list is debatable, but it's still something, I suppose. There are a few things that you'll probably need to buy, but there are pretty standard things that you can find practically anywhere. Before I go on, I also want to say that I'm so sorry with how late I'm posting this in some holidays. We're already halfway done. I was going to post this weeks ago, but I got some delays with some things, and so that's why I'm only posting this now. And yeah, I just wanted to say that I'm really sorry about that. But there's still a month left, technically, and you can always save this video in one of your playlists for next year if you think that you're still going to be interested by what I'm going to be mentioning later in this video. But yeah, anyway, let's go on to the video. The first thing that I'm going to be mentioning isn't the best thing, but I still wanted to mention it because I personally really enjoy doing it, and it's to play with Play-Doh, especially while you're watching something on YouTube or Netflix, for example. Obviously, it's not like a whole activity in itself, but if you want to spend an entire day doing nothing and just watching films, then you can just do that while playing with Play-Doh. And all you need is to get your Play-Doh and just play with it while you're doing something else. It does make me feel more productive than just watching something. It keeps my hand occupied. Um, but yeah, if you want to do something during the holidays that might heal your inner childhood, then maybe that could do. I might do this for the rest of the video. I hope it doesn't annoy anybody, but yeah. Now, if you'd rather be productive, I have a few things for you. Approximately 20-ish things. Starting with making your own stamps. Either using lino cut or using school rubbers. For the first option, you do need to buy the equipment or the kit. But if that's not something you want to do, then you can always go with the second option, which is to use rubbers, which you most likely have lying around in your home. All you need to do with this one is to carve rubbers. I've seen people do it and it seems really fun and it does turn out really cool. You still need carving tools. I don't know if there's any alternative that you might have at your house that could also work. But you do need carving tools and then ink pads, but that's more accessible than actually buying real ink paint with the first option. You might be able to glue two rubbers together to make a bigger design. I don't know if that would be possible, but maybe. I just wanted to mention this one because I feel like it would be a really fun thing to do. The next thing is to make things out of clay, whether it be pins, coasters, ramkins, anything else really, and it seems really fun. Again, you do need clay. I recommend getting clay that hardens with the air. Like this you don't need an oven and you don't need to heat it and do all that process. But yeah, you can spend an entire afternoon or more doing this activity and I'm sure it'll keep you busy. The next thing is to watch my previous video entitled 3 DIY wall decor using art waste and maybe recreate one of these or all of them if you have the material for it. I did this one a couple of weeks ago and I really enjoyed myself. It was just really fun and it did take quite a few days and it kept me occupied. So yeah, you can check it out and see if you're interested in any way. The next thing that you can do during the summer holidays without needing any friends is to binge watch all of my videos. You don't have to, it's a joke, I just, it was a cheap self promo, that's why I wanted to mention it, but again, it's not the most fun thing you can do, I suppose, but I had to put it in here for uh, legal reasons, um, 
anyway let's move on yeah the next thing is if you like to draw then draw somewhere you don't usually draw especially outside it sounds really simple but i feel like as artists we do tend to stick to our routines for example i usually draw at this table and that means that i generally just draw here and if i don't draw here then i draw somewhere else in my bedroom obviously we don't all live in the same places some people are luckier because they live in the countryside so they might have better places to draw at than people who live in the city but maybe you have a park nearby or even benches either way try to find yourself a spot where you can draw where you feel safe maybe a bench a table a block of grass somewhere I just feel like you doing that will be stepping out of your comfort zone and that's always an accomplishment and something to be proud of. Drawing somewhere outside could also be very refreshing because it's a change of scenery so I would recommend doing that a lot. Kind of as a substitute to actually going on holiday and traveling I suppose in its own way. The next thing to do is to soap carve. It was a huge trend a couple years ago because of ASMR but I have seen people actually make art with soap by carving it and I feel like it would be the perfect way to get introduced to carving. Like this you don't have to buy a huge block of stone and spend months trying to carve that or even wood. That can be pretty daunting. So yeah I feel like soap carving is a good and easy alternative to the world of carving. It's just a much more accessible way of carving something. Plus you can find soap pretty much in any shop. So yeah. The next thing is to make pom-poms. Obviously you need wool for this one and wool isn't the cheapest thing there is. But I remember spending entire days when I was at my grandparents and I had nothing to do just making pom-poms and I have honestly really fun memories of that. And it's honestly really satisfying. You could even do it while watching something again. I haven't done it in years but I have made quite a few pom-poms in the past and I feel like it could be really fun. The next thing is to make embroidery art. For this one you need yarn or thread, a needle, an embroidery hoop and scissors and fabric. Embroidery is something that takes quite a lot of time, I know that from experience, but it doesn't necessarily require a lot of skill. So yeah, I recommend it to anyone who wants something to do, because I've personally really enjoyed doing it in the past, so you might too. The next activity is to mix photography with embroidery. I saw a video on TikTok and that's why I decided to mention it in this video, because it looked extremely fun, again. But you do have two sub options into two wider options. The first option is to use magazine photos if you want to or if you don't have a printer. The second option is to print photos from the internet or photos that you have taken if you're someone who's into photography for example. Uh, once you've made up your mind on those two options you have two sub options and those two sub options concern the embroidery part. So the first option is to add embroidery in the already existing places. Basically to add dimension and make it pop. For example, adding embroidery in the pupil, if it's a portrait photo, add yarn in the hair, stuff like that. Kind of like colouring it but with embroidery. Or you can go with the second option which is to add details that aren't already there in the photo. This is the case of the TikTok video and they're adding flowers to a portrait, so something that isn't there in the photo, they're adding it in embroidery instead of adding embroidery to details that are in the photo. If that makes any sense. Either way, this looks really fun and you might want to do it. The next thing that you can do without needing any friends if you're someone who's artistic is to make bead art. With this one you also have two options. The first one is to make jewellery using beads like bracelets or rings etc. There's loads of people doing this on the internet so you can find tutorials on there. But if that's not something you want to do, then you can go with the second option, which is to actually make bead art. I'm going to insert clips and photos on the screen to illustrate a little more what I'm trying to say, because I don't really know how to explain myself. Yeah, I'm just going to let the photos and videos speak for themselves. The next thing that you can do is something that I also saw on TikTok, and it's to make a clay and hot glue blobs artwork. That's how I titled it on my computer list. I didn't know how else to really title this activity, so that's what I called it. I think it's pretty representative, really. But all you'll need for this one is clay, hot glue, a hot glue gun, paint, and a piece of paper, and some varnish as well, and a paintbrush. You just make little blobs of clay, then you let them dry, and then you paint them, and then you let that dry. You can paint them whatever color you want. And then once that's done, you add hot glue to each of them in one same motion until they're completely covered. 
and then just glue each blob to a piece of paper in the composition that you like and that's it the next thing on this list is something that's going to take a lot longer than anything that I've mentioned or that I will be mentioning and it is to start to learn something that you've been meaning to learn for a while that can be sewing, knitting, crocheting, learning to animate, roller skate or even play the piano or anything else really for the first few examples you can start watching videos on the topic all while making notes in a notebook you can buy books dedicated to these topics but there are so many free resources online that can help you learn some of these art domains so I wouldn't bother with actually buying things with your own money if you don't want to because again the internet offers so much in that aspect the next thing is to try bleach art if you haven't already if you have then you can continue doing that during your summer holidays for this one you'll need dark fabric preferably black a paintbrush and bleach you do have to be careful with this one because you're working with a pretty chemical liquid that stains really easily but that's the whole point of this project but yeah you just use bleach like in those videos and that's it Obviously, if this is your first time or your first few times, then it probably won't come out as well as in those videos. Uh, that's completely normal. I mean, it's a pretty unusual and different art activity, so you do have to get used to this art medium. So yeah, it's just going to be a learning process. The next thing is to add dimensions to an artwork, kind of like an art challenge. For this one, all you need to do is to paint or draw as you normally would. And then once you have your very flat artwork, you can start adding things to add dimension and add 3D to it. That can be pom-poms, sequins, thread, yarn, wool, crumpled paper, papier-mâché, fabric, felt, beads, really anything you have laying around. Uh, really play around with this one and try to find as many things as you can incorporate to elevate it, to make it come to life. I think it could be a really fun challenge. The next thing is to try to make envelope seal wax using crayons. I used to use crayons when I was a child, I don't do anymore but I still have kept those crayons so if you're in a similar case to this one then you can use those crayons to make envelope seal wax. I discovered this by watching this video which I will be putting in the description so you can watch because it has the entire tutorial on how to do this. The next thing is to paint with your fingers. For my previous video there was a moment where I was confronted with wet paint and so because I didn't want to waste it I decided to wipe it off on a sketchbook page so that I could go back to it one day and just make an actual artwork out of it. And it was honestly really fun, I did not expect it to be that fun but it is so I recommend doing that, you know, you just find yourself some paint and instead of using really precise art supplies you just use your fingers. I feel like it will make you less pressure to make something perfect because you're working with something that's pretty approximative. It's uh, an activity that might take some pressure off of your shoulders when you're making art because it's a messy and not very perfect process. The next thing is to make a swirly paint calm artwork. That's what I put on my computer. Again, I did not know how to categorize this one or title this one. But as the title says, and as those videos that I'm going to be showing on the screen show, all you need to do is put blobs of paint onto a piece of paper and then use a big paintbrush and just swirl it around on the piece until you're happy with it. It just seems like a really calming activity and I've seen a lot of people say that. Maybe you don't believe them, I don't know, try it for yourself and see if it is. But yeah, that's another thing that you can do this summer without needing any friends if you have paint laying around in your house. Another thing that you can do is to spill a liquid on a piece of paper and make portrait out of it. it will not work. What you're going to do with this one is use watercolour, one specific colour and mix it in a glass with some water and then spill that on a piece of paper. You can then blow it to make it go in more places than it was originally. Once it's spilled and dried then you can go in and only draw the portrait in the places where the liquid is. But yeah, the video says it all really so yeah, if that's something that interests you then you can do that. The next summer activity that I have for you is something that I've actually done before and it is something that I keep forgetting how fun it is until I do it again and it's to colour in a colouring book while listening to an audiobook. You can also do this while watching something, while listening to music, while listening to a podcast. I personally choose to do this while listening to an audiobook. You might wonder why can you find good audiobooks except for using Audible where you have to pay. 
You might be surprised, but there's honestly quite a few good audiobooks on YouTube for free. Obviously, they're there illegally, so they are there for only a couple months. So I can't really recommend the ones that I have listened to because they got deleted. But for example, the ones that I've listened to or come across are The Song of Achilles, A Crooked Kingdom, Six of Crows, By Your Side, The Raven Boys, Shadow Me, and other stories. So yeah, check to see if they have one of the books that you've been meaning to read and listen to that while you're calling in a comic book. It's honestly a very calming process as well and I really really recommend it. I keep forgetting that it's something that I can do and every time I do it I really enjoy myself so yeah. For the next one you need tiles in your home because if you do and they're very marbled and complex then you can take a picture of them and draw based on them. What I mean by that is to take a picture and use that as a reference and draw what you see in that tile. Kind of like those psychology tests. I personally have some in my bathroom and every time I look at them I see something completely different whether that be a bunny, a dog, a portrait, a profile, an eye and every time I'm like I want to draw what I see and I feel like if you have those kind of tiles then that could be something fun to do that puts your imagination to the test. The next one is to find an old artwork that you're prepared to sacrifice either because you don't really like it or just because you really don't care. Rip it in two and then glue one of the two sides to another piece of paper or sketch rip page and draw the other side. I got this idea from a TikTok video and as you can see in it, they're not trying to replicate the other side as perfectly as they can but rather create something rather bizarre. It is a good exercise in the sense that it keeps you from holding so much value on everything you create and do, which is not personally something that I could do. I know that the person in this video said that they had notebooks and notebooks and notebooks filled with drawings, so there's a lot to work with. But because I don't draw that often, the ones that I do are pretty rare and a little special to me. Which is why I don't know if I'd be capable of doing this one, but who knows? If you wouldn't have a problem doing this one, or if you're having an existential crisis, then you can definitely try it out. Now on to the speedrun part, where I'm going to mention a few other things that you can do this summer, but we'll not be going into too much detail. Starting with making origami flowers. The next one is to put thread on a canvas and then also paint. Another thing that you can do is to make shrinky dinks. And then the last one that I have for this speedrun part is to make a swirly yarn canvas artwork. And there you have it. I mentioned everything I wanted to mention in this video, around 20-ish things that you can do this summer without needing any friends if you don't have any or if you'd rather do things on your own that concerns the art world and what it has to offer. There's a very high chance that once I upload this video I'm going to think of something that I would have wished I mentioned in here but either way this is still something and I'm going to leave it at that. There's obviously so many other things that you can do but here are at least a few things that might pique your interest. If any of these activities happen to be the main focus of one of my upcoming videos, then it is purely a coincidence. As I said previously, I am not concerned whatsoever by this situation. So yeah, if I do them, it is not because I'm in this case. It's just because these are fun and I'd rather do them than hang out with all of my friends that I have. Yeah. P.S. You're allowed to not do anything whatsoever during your summer holidays. I know that it's been ingrained in us that we have to be constantly doing something and constantly productive 24-7 or we should be ashamed of ourselves, but you're allowed to spend an entire day or two even simply reading, lying in your bed for example, doing absolutely nothing if that's what you choose to do. Taking a break is just as important as being productive. You're allowed to make choices about how you spend your time. I mean, it is your life. I'm just suggesting activities in case not doing anything is going to make you feel worse and you actually want to do things during your summer holidays. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this list and this video. If you did, then give this video a thumbs up. It really does help. And if you did, then thank you very much. If you made it through to the end of this video, then wow, you are a true champ. And I hope to see you soon. And if I do, then I'll see you soon. Bye!